Okay, in this video, we're going to go ahead and take a look at hypothesis testing using confidence intervals. This will actually be a continuation of question number three, which I'm assuming at this point you already did. If you haven't done example number three and worked through it already, I would ask you to go back and do it. In fact, I'm going to go ahead here and read what example number three actually said here, just so we can get the full context before we go back to what we had. Here's what it says. An advertising company is trying to help pop... Uh, help popular restaurant chains develop effective TV ads to attract more customers. As a part of the preliminary research, random surveys of males and females are collected. A random sample of 450 females showed that 72% have reduced the amount they spend on eating out in the past year. A random sample of 580 males showed that 65% of them have reduced the amount they spend on eating out in the last year. At alpha being 0 0.01, can you reject the claim? that the proportion of females who have reduced the amount they spent out on eating is greater than the proportion of males who have reduced the amount they spend on eating out? Okay, so this is kind of the question. We're curious about what percentage of males have said, I don't want to spend as much anymore on eating out. What percentage of females have said the same thing? And then which one's kind of like the bigger percentage? Specifically here, though, we're curious if the male or if the female percentage is greater than the male percentage. Okay, so if we were to go back down here to this question, we'll see that we'll be able to come up with all the same sort of um, uh, conclusions that we did back in that first question that you should have already completed. So here's what I'm going to have. Before I start, I'm going to identify again some uh, different variables to work with. I'm going to let P1 stand for the percentage of females who have reduced their spending. And I'll let P2 stand for the percentage of males who have reduced their spending. Again, I don't know what these percentages are, but my goal then is to start to think about hypotheses that go with them. So I have two hypotheses here that I'm interested in constructing. My first one, automatically remember, is going to be that these two percentages are the same. But my second set of hypotheses, or my second hypothesis is going to be, well, let's see, I want to test the fact that the female amount is greater than the male amount. Well, that would mean that P1 is greater than P2. Notice in green hypotheses, that means that P1 minus P2 is either equal to zero or P1 minus P2 is greater than zero. I'm not sure which one of those is correct. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to create in this question a, a confidence interval for P1 minus P2. We're going to try to figure out where that value is. So this is where the green hypotheses become so important. At the beginning of this question, we're going to start by again believing H0 is true until we find enough evidence to change our mind. And right now, we believe then that P0, or P1 minus P2 is actually equal to zero. Again, I could now go ahead and list out all my sample evidence. And you would have already had all of this sample evidence back in the previous problem. But I'll go ahead and quickly just re-record it here. So you might have been able to find again that if N was going to be 450, then to get 72% of those people, to have their reduced spending left you with 324. You could easily get just doing 450 times 0.70. And hopefully you were able to do that on the last question. Of course, then we know that p hat number one is 72%. I don't even need to set up the fraction. I know that's what I'll get when I do the division. We know that for N2, that's 580 men you should have been able to discover that it was 377 men that reduced their spending. And P hat 2, again, we were already given at 65%. Again, we want to combine these to say that P hat 1 minus P hat 2 right now comes out as 0 0.07, so a 7% difference. Okay, again, we should have done all the previous checks. So for the moment, when I write my checks here, I'll just say, see the previous problem. I won't go ahead and re-record all of them down here. Okay. 
when I go ahead and I actually try to create the confidence interval, I still need to know the level of confidence. So I have to think again. I have all of my p hat 1s minus my p hat 2s that are possible. And they fall into a nice normal distribution. And since alpha was given as a point 0.1, and I'm kind of wondering if my p hat 1 minus p hat 2 is too big, there's a percentage on the big side that's 1%. If anything gets too big and falls into that top 1%, it'll be considered rare. So maybe like this 7% difference that we see here is getting too big, and it might be considered rare. But when I construct a confidence interval, I remember that it's got to be symmetrical. So even though there's only 1% in the picture, there's kind of, again, an implied 1% over here as well. And so that means that in total, my interval covers 98% of the distribution. So when I go ahead and I try to construct my interval, I can look on the formula sheet again to see what calculator command I'm interested in using. The formula sheet says that if I want to do a confidence interval, again I checked all these checks, this is how the interval gets constructed, but here is ultimately the interval command. I want a two prop z interval. So if I was to go ahead and do that on the calculator, move this up here, a two prop z interval. I don't want the test, I want the interval. So I might have to scroll around here for a while. Oh, there it is at option B. In here, I can see that it's gonna ask for all the same information. So let's see, I had 324 out of 450, I had 377 out of 580, and I want a 98% confidence interval. When I calculate this, I get 0 0.0026, 0 0.1374. And it's at this point that I can say, again, I'm 98% confident that when I actually do the subtraction p hat, or sorry, p1 minus p2, that the result is gonna fall inside this interval. I don't know for sure, but I'm really confident. And so when I go ahead and I take a look back at H0, which I'm assuming is true, H0 said that P1 minus P2 should be zero. So is zero in this interval? No. So notice this is my conclusion then. There are two possible outcomes. The believed value of P1 minus P2, which is zero, is in the interval, or it's not in the interval. And we have that it's not in the interval. So it seems like we found enough evidence then to say that H0 doesn't seem like a good fit anymore. So I'll word my conclusion as follows. Since the interval does not contain the believed value of p1 minus p2, which we said was zero, we reject h naught. It doesn't seem like it's a good fit. Well, therefore, I can state what I do believe. I can say we have enough evidence to believe that the percentage of females who have reduced spending is greater than the percentage of males who have reduced spending. That seems to be exactly in line with what H1 actually said. Okay, so hopefully again, this doesn't feel too terribly different than what we did when we did hypothesis testing with confidence intervals in chapter eight. It's the same basic idea. Again, if you take a look at all the questions here, you should be able to do each of these with uh, either a hypothesis test in the traditional sense or with the confidence interval. And the worksheet has many more problems that you can go practice with. I'm going to go ahead and leave example number four as one for you to try to practice with because that's what we would have done during class time normally. And of course the solution is up online.
I'll see you then in the next video where we talk about section 9.2.